five, four. We've gone for main engine start. We have. Shuttle has cleared the tower. A vehicle that could launch into space as a rocket, put 25 tons of cargo into orbit, and land on a runway like an airplane. Not just once, but over and over again. In the 1980s, NASA would rip this concept from the pages of science fiction and place it squarely on the cutting edge of space travel. Going up the launch pad, you know, looking up and seeing, you know, this huge, you know, rocket that kind of sounds like an animal. You can kind of hear the gurgling and the hissing and, you know, it sounds like it's alive. The few seconds right before liftoff, every time I've done this has been a, a little bit of fright about whether I really want to be doing this or not. Ten seconds, we have both main engine start. I was really Seven. just focusing right on the tasks at hand and trying not to think about uh, you know, the fact that tons and tons and tons of rocket fuel were about to explode around us. Lift off of Shuttle Discovery. Discovery roll program. Roger roll, Discovery. Discovery on the proper alignment of the eight and a half minute line to orbit. Six seconds into the flight. The forces and the uh, sensations are just powerful beyond um, imagination. They shake you so much that you can hardly see the displays in front of you. Right after the solid rocket boosters are uh, jettisoned at two minutes, it's a very smooth ride. The acceleration is very powerful, um, and, uh, and you're on your way to orbit with a very different feeling. As soon as you achieved orbit, the engines cut off. Just instantaneously, uh, you go from being pressed in the seat to hanging in your straps and sort of floating in the cockpit. The fact that I was going to be the first American woman to go into space carried huge expectations along with it. And of course, it was very important to me that I understood my role really well and that I was really well prepared for the mission because the last thing that I wanted to do was get into space and make a mistake. So I wanted to be very, very sure that I was able to meet the expectations. But it wasn't for me. Um, a desire to be the first African-American in space. My desire was to uh, make a contribution, just to make a contribution. And uh, uh, I think I, I probably told people that I would probably prefer not being in that role versus being in that role because I figured being the number two guy would be a lot more fun. feels like you weigh twice as much as you normally do during the entry portion. Once you get on final, all of the uh, emotions and, and, and focus are just on that last little bit of uh, landing and it, it's, a, it's a neat way to end a flight when you actually get to put your hands on the stick and fly it yourself. Gear down and lock. Touchdown. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. We come together today to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans, to share the grief that we all feel, and perhaps in that sharing to find the strength to bear our sorrow and the courage to look for the seeds of hope. 
risk is something that we have to just really consider as part of our, our life, uh, especially in exploration. I know we've had some tragedies, and we'll probably have tragedies in the future, but you know, the, the ones that we've lost were probably the first ones to tell you, keep pressing on, don't stop because of us. My role as a mechanical engineer was to find out, you know, what uh, fell apart or what happened. And we finally found that the uh, O-ring is supposed to be designed so that pressure on one side pushes them uh, more securely into place. Uh, the, the housing for that big O-ring was just the opposite. The, the pressure actually pushed it out. Finally, of course, uh, when the thing burned through, and actually burned the nozzle through, uh, it, it was pretty obvious to see what, what the problem was. So with a, uh, we got the job of uh, redesigning. One, zero, and liftoff. Liftoff, Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Damn. Roger roll, Discovery. Yeah, I'm Good morning, Discovery, and you gotta go for HST deploy ops. NASA opened the decade of the 90s by placing the Hubble Space Telescope into orbit. It would peer farther into space and further back in time than any other telescope. And in the closing decade of the 20th century, Hubble and a host of other robotic explorers would provide astonishing new views and perspectives. <laughs> Everybody was up. We were off to discover the secrets of the universe. It was, it was great. And then things started to be sort of scratch your head. Why is it taking so long? Why can't we focus the telescope? What's going on? What was wrong with Hubble is the, kind of the same thing that's wrong with your eyes when you need glasses. Basically, the shape of the lens was wrong. So in essence, the telescope was nearsighted, and it needed some glasses. I was taking a shower in uh, the hotel in Germany, and they have these really funny shower heads where the shower head will kind of move up and down and back and forth, and that's when it dawned on me. We can have this instrument robotically raise up the corrective lens, flip out, if you will, just like that shower head, these other corrective optics to correct the aberration for all the instruments. All of the work leading up to the first servicing mission is probably the most exciting time of my career. The NASA program changed the nature of astronomy. We made some extravagant promises on Hubble. We undersold the program. Whatever we said, Hubble did better, I think. It really changed the nature of what we know. Hubble is one of the most phenomenal things we've ever done in space. Data that we get from Hubble will continue to change the way we think about ourselves, about the universe, and our place in it. You know, the, the pictures from Hubble are, are iconic. You see them everywhere. The fingers of God. This is the gas pillars that are actually um, many, many, many light years across. So the scale of these things is enormous. And you, you're actually seeing the birth of stars. It's a star nursery. It starts to give you a sense of how small we are and how vast the universe is. And that's my favorite picture. <laughs>